In 1286, King Alexander III of Scotland died. But because both of his children had already died, the throne went to his daughter's daughter, Margaret, the three-year-old Princess of Norway. While she was still in Norway, King Edward I of England arranged that she would marry his son, the future King Edward II. But the Treaty of Burgham guaranteed that Scotland and England would remain separate regardless of the marriage. However, in 1290, while en route to Scotland, the young princess died and this left a number of men claiming the throne notably John Balliol and Robert the Bruce. The Guardians of Scotland feared a civil war, so they asked Edward I of England to mediate the succession. Edward I, who had already annexed Wales in 1283, demanded that he should be made Lord Paramount of Scotland, and although initially reluctant, many Scottish nobles risked losing their English lands, so eventually they accepted in 1291. Edward appointed John Balliol king, but began to treat him like a vassal. For instance, when war erupted with France in 1294, Edward demanded that Scottish troops be sent to fight. So the Scottish Council, consisting of 12 earls, nobles and bishops, were angered by this and they decided to create an alliance with the French in 1295, the Old Alliance. Edward, hearing of this alliance, sent troops north, thus beginning the war. In March 1296, the English sacked the border town of Berwick, in April they won the Battle of Dunbar and in July John Balliol abdicated. The Scottish nobles had to pay homage to Edward while the Stone of Destiny was taken and placed under the English throne. But a veteran soldier, Andrew Moray, and a landowner, William Wallace, gathered thousands of supporters and launched an open revolt against the English the following year. Months of small raids and rebellions forced the English to send troops to Stirling to crush them. But the outnumbered Scots assaulted the English on the narrow bridge and emerged victorious. Andrew Moray died in battle, but William Wallace was appointed the Guardian of Scotland and began launching raids into northern England. Hearing of the defeat in Scotland, Edward I signed a truce with the French and returned to fight the Scots. In July, Edward emerged victorious at the Battle of Falkirk, forcing Wallace to flee Scotland. In his place, Robert the Bruce and John Cummin, the son of a previous claimant to the Scottish throne became the guardians of Scotland. Meanwhile, Edward ignored the Pope's condemnations and continued campaigning in Scotland. In 1304, he captured Stirling Castle and the last of the Scottish rebels surrendered. Plus, just a year later, a Scottish knight handed William Wallace over to the English and he was executed. However, back in Scotland, Robert the Bruce made a grab for power. He killed John Cummin in 1306 and, with no other claimants to the throne, he was crowned King of Scotland. News of this reached England and hostilities resumed. The English once again won the initial encounters forcing Robert to flee, possibly to the Hebrides in late 1306. Robert the Bruce returned to the mainland in early 1307, and then, just months later, Edward I died. He was replaced by his son, Edward II, whose incompetent and weak rule allowed Robert the Bruce to spend the next few years picking off English strongholds and crushing the remaining Scottish threats to his rule. It was only in 1314, when Robert lay siege to Stirling Castle, that the English were forced to respond. Edward II marched a much larger army to meet the Scots, but they were defeated at the Battle of Bannockburn. As the English fled from Scotland, Robert the Bruce sent a force to fight the English in Ireland and to kill the last remaining members of the Balliol family. This campaign, however, ended in failure in 1318 when Robert's brother, Edward, was killed in battle. In 1320, the Declaration of Arbroath was sent to the Pope, confirming Scotland as an independent nation. Edward II, despite his defeats, never did recognise Robert as King of Scotland. But in 1327, Edward was killed and replaced by the young Edward III. Edward Edward III signed the Treaty of Edinburgh-Northampton with Robert in 1328, guaranteeing Scottish independence. However, the agreement didn't last very long, as just a year after the treaty was signed, Robert the Bruce died and was replaced by his young son. This created another crisis over the throne and the Second War of Scottish Independence erupted in 1332. 